Hello Internet, this is Oscar Release again. In this video, we'll go over Halley's method for finding roots. We'll discuss the history and derivation, and then some examples. And finally, I'll show you how to make cool fractals using it. If you haven't already, I do recommend watching my videos on Newton's method and Newton's method interval of convergence. Recall that with Newton's method, we use tangent lines to approximate our next point. Halley's method does something different. We instead use tangent hyperbolas, but first let's go back in time. There was a comet that came by in 1682. We'll come back to this, or rather, it will come back. In January of 1684, Edmund Halley, Christopher Wren, and Robert Hooke met to discuss planetary motion and the inverse square law. Hooke claimed to have derived it, but after some time was never able to provide evidence of doing so. In August of that year, Halley then turned to Newton, who also claimed to have solved the inverse square law, but he was actually able to provide evidence. Newton then gave Halley a paper called Of the Motion of Bodies in an Orbit. That paper became the basis for a series of books that we call Principia, which has its own drama and history associated with it. Two years later, Halley nominated Joseph Rapson to join the Royal Society. This is his signature in the charter. Rapson is best known from the newton rapson method, originally published in this book. Then, in 1692, a French mathematician named Delagny created this new method for finding cube roots, which intrigued Halley. In 1694, Halley published a new, exact, and easy method of finding the roots of any equation generally without any reduction, which we can now refer to as the basis of Halley's method. He built upon the work of Delagny and Raphson. We'll now skip to 1705 when Halley published what is probably his most famous work, his Synopsis of Comets. In the English translation, he writes, Hitherto have considered the orbits of comets as exactly parabolic. But since they appear frequently enough, and since none of them can be found to move within hyperbolic motion, it is highly probable they rather move in very eccentric orbits and make their returns after long periods of time, though the period of its revolution be vastly long. Now when every new comet shall appear, we may be able to know whether it be any of those which has appeared before, and consequently to determine its period, axis of orbit, and to foretell its return. He then goes on to note three comet settings, which were probably the same one, in 1531, 1607, and one that he saw in 1682. Hence, I dare venture to foretell that it will return again in the year 1758. On Christmas 1758, Johann Georg Paulitsch spotted Halley's Comet, or what we now refer to as Halley's Comet. If Halley had lived to see it, he would have been well over 100 years old. Let's jump back in time now to 1712, to one Brooke Taylor in a letter to John Maschin. He writes, While I was thinking of solving the Kepler problem, I fell into a general method of applying Dr. Halley's extraction of roots to all polynomials, and it is comprehended in this theorem. We now refer to that as Taylor's theorem. Feigenbaum writes, If I interpret Taylor's notes correctly, he arrived at Taylor's theorem in the following way. He first noticed what Halley had failed to realize before him, that the coefficients in a generalized version of his equations are directly related to successive derivatives of the original polynomial. Let's now jump to a most excellent paper called On the Geometry of Halley's Method by Scavo and Thu. They write, Despite Taylor's achievements, he was unable to provide a general formula for Halley's method. It remained to Schroeder, more than one and a half centuries later, to derive Halley's iteration function as we now know it. But Schroeder made no reference to Halley. Indeed, Schroeder mentioned Halley's formula only in passing. Frame, on the other hand, was the first to derive Halley's iteration function via a second-degree Taylor polynomial. Selehov, in 1952, was apparently the first to suggest that Halley's iteration function could be derived using an oscillating rational function of the form this equation. In other words, Halley's formula can be derived using an oscillating hyperbola. Indeed, Halley's method is sometimes called the method of tangent hyperbolas. In 
With Halley's method, we draw that tangent hyperbola to come up with our new value for x2. This may not look like a tangent hyperbola unless we zoom out or use a different function, which is much more clear here, to come up with our next value for x2. Our equation for the tangent hyperbola is given by this function. This equation is designed to go through our point at xn and to also be tangent using the variables a, b, and c. We also have a helper variable d, which it looks like this. From this equation, we can actually derive Halley's method. With our hyperbola, all we really care about for our next value for x is where our hyperbola is zero. So if we plug in x sub n plus one, all we really need is for that numerator to be equal to zero. Therefore, if we move our x sub n and c terms over and substitute what we know for c, this gives us Halley's method, although it's not the traditional derivation. Let's imagine a line and have that line go through our function at x sub n and have the same derivative at x sub n, giving us an equation that looks something like this. Where that line intersects the x-axis, we care to be zero to give us our next value for x. Therefore, plug in x sub n plus one, move the f term over and divide by the derivative term, then move the x term over and then we get Newton's method. There's a strange coincidence though that line equation is actually our first order Taylor polynomial. What if we instead use the second order Taylor polynomial? Using the same process, plug in x sub n plus one, where our function will give us zero. Then move our f term to the right, and this time we'll factor out the subtraction of x sub n plus one minus x sub n. Then divide our other term over, and finally move our x term. And the problem is we're still left with an x sub n plus one term on the right side. There actually is a way to get rid of this term. Recall our Newton's method function. If we replace that subtraction with the Newton step, we can come up with this form. Then do some cleanup and we get Halley's method. Let's look at an example of x squared minus x minus one using Halley's method. We'll need the derivative and the second derivative with an n condition of 10 to the minus seven. If we start from the value of zero, we do three function evaluations, then plug them into Halley's method to give us our next value for x, in this case, negative a half. After two more iterations, we're able to come up with a solution of negative 0 0.618. Let's look at this example of x cubed minus x squared minus x minus one. We'll need the first and second derivatives and this time we'll start from a very bad starting guess of minus two. Do our three function evaluations and then plug everything into Halley's method, giving us a value of negative one point something. This one does eventually converge, but after 16 iterations, let's compare this to how Newton's method would behave starting from the same point. Here's one iteration of both methods. Then after about five iterations, and then after about 10, notice that Noon's method is actually doubling back on itself. In fact, Noon's method takes a very long time to converge. We'll do one last example, which is the arctangent using Halley's method. Find our first and second derivatives, plug in our starting value. It takes about three iterations to converge. Let's compare how Halley's method does in this case against Noon's method. In this example, Newton's method diverges while Halley's converges. And in fact, Halley's method is usually much more convergent overall and converges with a faster order. Let's compare the convergence behaviors in the complex plane using a Newton fractal. If you haven't already, I would highly suggest watching my video on Newton fractals. Only now we'll use Halley's method. This is the Newton fractal for the arctangent. And here's Halley's version of that fractal. Let's expand it. You can see how this is much more convergent. Let's look at another example. In this case, the sine of z using Newton's method. Halley's method actually looks very similar. There isn't a whole lot of difference for the sine function. Just note that for real numbers where the imaginary part is zero, 
this one has a much better convergent behavior than the Newton version. Here is the Newton fractal for z cubed minus 1, which we'll then compare to Halley's method. With Halley's method, we have far fewer extremum points causing the function to diverge, and it also converges much more quickly. Recall, though, that we can add a variable a in front to make a generalized fractal, which looks something like this. Here's the value of a of 1 half, but recall that we can make a any complex number, such as the value of 1 half plus i over 2, giving us a look of spirals within spirals. This is the Newton fractal for z to the 8th plus 15z to the 4th minus 16. Let's compare that to the Halley version. Again, for the Halley version, there's a lot fewer extremum points, and it converges much faster overall. Let's generalize things, such as the value of a of 1 half, and even better still, a complex number, like 1 half plus i over 2. If this had a director, I'd say it was Christopher Nolan. Dreams within dreams, it seems. The final thoughts. Halley's method is more complex than Newton's method requiring a second derivative, but this does give you cubic convergence and better convergence overall, but we still can diverge or divide by zero. Halley's comment will come back again in the year 2061. I'm looking forward to it. I'd also recommend checking out Laguerre's method and Householder's method. The code that I used, as well as the images that I created, will be hosted on GitHub. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you found the history of Halley's method as fascinating as I did. If you would like for me to cover the history of other methods like Noon Ratson, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you.